Hello everyone, welcome back to another Brickside Chat. Got a new hat today, I hope you like my hat, it's blue. Anyway, let's get right into the questions this week. We have a lot of questions. First is from Tiffany's Brickery. How do you find all the sets that are three times part out value? Are you going below three times to get some? Um, very basically put, sometimes yes, we will go below three times. Um, I would say we'll go to about 2.8 comfortably. Maybe like 2.7, 2.6 absolute lowest we will never go below 2.5 ever on purpose we did at one point accidentally get like a 1.8 or 1.9 times part out on a set that was some mistake i'm not entirely sure how we did that um <clears throat> but no we will never go below 2.5 we try to stay for that three obviously recently we've been able to not get much we haven't been able to get much um so uh we've been hanging around three times and just not buying stuff because we still have a backlog of things to go through, which is a great thing to have. Um, so, well, I guess it depends. It could be a good thing to have, but obviously those sets aren't in your inventory. Those pieces aren't making you money, so it's also a bad thing to have. Um, but fortunately for us, we have work to be doing, um, so we're not having to go search for a ton of stuff because unfortunately, or at least around us, there's just not a ton of stuff available. But yes, we'll sometimes go below three. Hopefully that answers that question. <clears throat> All right, next question here is from John Wick, who says, have you ever thought about starting an Instagram account for your store? Uh, yes, we've thought about it. Um, we've thought about a few things. I know people have requested a lot of things. Um, unfortunately, you know, if you think about it, YouTube is one thing to post on. Patreon is a second level. If we add an Instagram and all these other things, it just it keeps piling on top. And we want to, I, I personally feel that it'd be better to have one, or in this case, two, you know, Patreon and YouTube places to post stuff with higher quality content as opposed to like 12 different places. Uh, to post things where it's just going to be all scattered and stuff or we have too many things where eventually we just need to post the same thing to each platform um, while it might help you know attract uh, more people to the channel and bring people here I'm not entirely I don't think it's worth it in terms of lowering the quality of the content that we're delivering to you here uh, just to try to manage an Instagram account obviously it could be something as simple as just take a picture of what we're parting out that day but the downside is uh, you know we're trying to film a vlog now weekly so if we're trying to take a picture and post on Instagram are we going to take that picture and then, you know, make the post and then forget about the vlog? Or, uh, you know, we are trying to run a business as well. We can't just be spending 100% of the time making videos and things like that because that doesn't pay for, for the store and stuff. So, uh, yes, we've thought about Instagram. We probably will not start one anytime soon, though, unfortunately. Uh, sorry about that. All right. Um, four questions here from AKA Turbo. First of all, uh, kind of a cancellation thing here. How do you deal with a customer that wants to cancel an order after they have already paid, but before you've picked the order? Do you refund the whole order amounts and eat the fees or charge them for the fees? And if you refund them, how do you do that and add the pieces back in your inventory in an efficient manner? Uh, that was actually one of the four questions. But <clears throat> essentially, if someone wants to cancel an order, pretty much we'll always cancel the order um, if they paid or not. There's only one time I can remember. Um, it was actually in the past I don't know, three or four weeks probably, um, where they actually did cancel the order after they had paid. Now, in this case, it was a small enough order. I just gave them the full refund. To me, it didn't really matter. The fee was, I don't know, probably 80 cents or something, like a, a dollar, less than a dollar. Um, so to me, it wasn't a huge deal. Obviously, we lost, let's say, a dollar on that transaction. But um, if it was a big order um, and there were a lot of fees, I would probably refund up to the amount where we start getting charged fees. So, for example, if it's a $100 order and it's 5% fees, $5 of that is fees. So I would refund them $95 so that we don't lose any money. We don't make any money, but we also don't lose any money. Now, technically, um, in our terms page, that would be considered a return um, in terms of they placed the order. Maybe we haven't picked it yet, but they want to cancel the order after it's been processed. Now, the payment is the processing part. Um, so in that case, we only owe them 90% of the transaction, we would charge a 10% restocking fee, um, which would cover the time and you know anything that it takes us to cancel the order, to put the pieces back on the wall, if they've been picked, all that kind of stuff. So technically, we can do that. Um, but most people, at least from my experience, place an order and request an invoice. Then after I invoice them for international shipping and it's too expensive, that's when they'll request to cancel the order, um, usually way before. Um, they have paid for the order. So we haven't really run into this problem, but I would say try not to lose money on fees, but I also haven't experienced a ton of people um, canceling an order after they've uh, lost, or after they've paid for the order. All right, next question here, uh, also from AKA Turbo says, when parting out sets, what 
method do you use to find out what lots you've already you already have in your inventory and those that are not and then how do you get those drawer locations into brick stock um, so when parting out sets uh, the method we use is we just add all the pieces we don't have and then on the next page of brick link it shows us um, uh, you know what we have in our inventory now there is another way and he continues on to the question here says I saw another seller has a program that automatically added the drawer locations to brick stock but he didn't show what program this is so there is another way to do it. Actually, I think there's a couple ways. You could use something called Brick Sync, which is a like command-based uh, or a terminal or command prompt. I don't remember what it's called exactly, but a command-based thing where you type in commands to a, a terminal window or whatever. Um, as you do that, you can actually return a BSX file of um, something. I think it's called Sync. I can't remember what the command is called exactly, but um, it'll return a BSX file with all the pieces that you already have in your inventory from the particular set you're parting out. Um, and then obviously you can go find those drawers, put the pieces away, whatever it might be. There is another way to do that, and it's something in Brick Freedom. So if you haven't heard of Brick Freedom, it syncs Brick Owl and Brick Link into one uh, cohesive inventory, I suppose. Um, and uh, it gives you a lot of other options, like multi-picking or more yeah, multi-order picking, um, inventory management, eventually, as well as this uh, sync feature here. Um, where you can actually part out a set and it'll return a BSX file of what you already have in your store. So I will have a tutorial in the next couple weeks as to how to do that. It's a really exciting feature, really, really awesome, amazing, super duper useful, um, but hopefully that'll help in the next couple weeks. Next question, it says, when picking sets to part out, do you take into consideration the colors of those sets? Uh, the colors of those pieces in those sets. For example, set 75957, or most friends sets may have a good part out value, but it's made up of mostly purple pieces. If the colors are not popular, would you pass on that set? Yes, if the probably not colors though. If the pieces don't look like they're going to sell, and that would be based on you know the color, the mold type, and the research that we've done to see if it looks like these pieces are going to sell, uh, we probably wouldn't get the the set. But if it's all purple pieces and it looks like they all sell, we're going to buy it because it's going to end up selling. That's the real question here. Does it sell? If it doesn't sell not worth getting. If it sells, it's worth getting no matter what the pieces are. Minifigs, you know, Duplo, whatever. Okay, maybe not Duplo. We don't do Duplo because it takes up so much room. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, if the colors are popular um, or not popular, if the pieces sell, we're going to get the set pretty much. Um, okay, final question here is or from AKA Turbo. How do you store stickers? It wasn't in your storage video. Well, we have two very simple ways, a little drawer and a bigger drawer. <laughs> um, so. Over there, drawer 305, which is one of our larger drawers, um, or it's the one of the 24 count Acromill unit drawers. Um, we have 40 something lots in that drawer. Um, and anytime we sell a sticker, you gotta pull it out and you gotta shuffle through all the stickers to find which one you're looking for. It's kind of a pain, but that's just our sticker drawer. Um, in addition to that, we have some larger drawers over there for larger sheets of stickers that we can't quite uh, fit in this in drawer 305. Um, but that's how we store our stickers. Other people put it inside of maybe a binder with a page protector. Um, different things like that, but we ours work fine in drawers. We haven't had problems with it. We don't sell a ton of stickers, um, so we didn't need a dedicated uh, space for it. Next question is from Coleco Morris, who says, when a new set comes out, how long before the part out is listed on BrickLink? Unfortunately, I don't really know. I would say anywhere from a week to three or four weeks, depending on the set. Um, shortest time I've seen it, I would say probably like five days. Um, some of them are really, really quick. I'd say probably for smaller sets. Um, and I think it just depends how long it takes someone to do the inventory for it and then how long the verification process takes and stuff, obviously. Um, but it, it just depends. Usually I would say um, within two weeks on average, it'll probably be there. Maybe within three weeks. Um, we'll make it three weeks. Um, if it's not there within three weeks, I would say you should expect it any day um, because it, it shouldn't take too much longer than that. But as we all know, BrickLink uh, is not always the most efficient process uh, doing things. Um, so sometimes it could take a long time. Who knows? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a firm answer on that for you. Okay. Next question here is from Multigasm Geek who says, why is it important to have a high lot count? Now, there's been some confusion as to what a lot is versus what a piece is. So our piece count is high, over 200,000 pieces, but our lot count is only about 5,000 or whatever it is right now currently. So why is it important to have a higher lot count? Um, you can never have a higher lot count than piece count, but why is your goal to have a high lot count um, in terms of our case? So a piece, for example, if you have a one by two blue brick, 
okay? That is one piece. If you have two one by two blue bricks, that's two pieces, but one lot because they're the same exact piece. But if you have a one by two blue brick and a one by two red brick, those are two pieces, so your piece count is two, but your lot count is also two because one's red and one is blue, so they're different. Um, so you can have 10 blue bricks and 10 red bricks, it means you have 20 total pieces, but only two different lots because they're two individual pieces. So essentially the basic way to break this down, why is lot count important? Well, let's say you need to go to the store, you need to buy milk, eggs, and uh, butter. Well, you can go to this store, you get your milk, this store, you get your eggs, this store, you get your butter. The problem is you've had to go to three different stores. So what if you go to this one store and get your milk, eggs, and butter all in one trip? Well, if, think of it lot count that way. If you can go to one store and get all these different pieces that you need because they have a high lot count, they have a high variety in their store, you're probably going to choose that store over the other three put together. It'll cost you less money and shipping and all that kind of stuff. So that's why lot count for us is more important. Variety goes up, meaning more people are going to come into your store um, and you have a higher chance of collecting, collecting, of uh, collecting people. That's not right. Um, of bringing people in, attracting people. That's the word I'm looking for. Attracting people to your store because there's a higher chance they might need a piece that you have. Um, so a high lot count to us is important because it potentially brings us more traffic. And we've seen a direct correlation with that over the past, uh, I don't know, month and a half now. As lot count goes up, people coming to your store goes up as well. Alrighty. Price Patrick 64 says, and this is kind of an awkward question, how do you save customer shipping addresses for future shipping? So I'm gonna go on the assumption here that maybe you made a mistake with an order, okay? And you have to ship this customer another piece because you forgot to put it in the bag, it was broken, whatever it might be. Uh, in that case, your PayPal transaction will forever hold that shipping address for whatever that specific transaction was. If you personally are holding onto their shipping addresses for future stuff, I would say don't do that for probably two reasons. First of all, security. You don't really want to be holding on to customer's information if you don't have to, especially if it's not protected. You know, the password on your computer is not protected um, in terms of, you know, having just it on a spreadsheet or something like that. Um, I, would, I would recommend against doing that unless you have some sort of protection. And then on top of that, uh, let's just say, for example, they come to your store two months after they place their first order and they place another order. Well, you see that their name matches up with, you know, whatever in your database and you ship it to this location that you had from their first order. What if they've moved locations in those two months or something? You don't want to ship something from an old address in the future to their old address where they're now in a new address, if that made any sense. <laughs> um, so uh, I would say preferably don't save the customer shipping addresses for their security as well as uh, your, your protection in terms of sending it to the wrong place in the future. Um, but if you do need their addresses, I believe PayPal, um, as far as I know, saves all that information from that transaction for a very long time. All right, next question here from Drew, very similar to the purple piece question we had a few minutes ago. Would you buy a set that has mostly pieces of the same color if it, allows your, if it follows your three times value rule? Like I said, yes, as long as their pieces are gonna sell. If something parts out for five times, 10 times, 20 times, 50 times, but it sits in our inventory and never sells, it was useless, it was a waste of money. So we have to find something that parts out for three times roughly or more and is going to sell. So it doesn't matter what color it is though. All right, we're on to our last three questions here from Michael. It says, you guys said that you, or you said that you had instructions priced at one cent each and they never sell. Do you keep them in your store just to increase your lot and part counts? Well, from a vlog a few weeks ago, we actually went through and purged a lot of our instructions. We had quantities of like 60, 70, 80, 90, like 98 I think was the highest quantity we have of certain, or we had of certain instructions. So a lot of that we just got rid of. It was not worth holding on to 98 of something and selling it for one cent each. That's less than a dollar. And it was a lot of pieces or a lot of instruction booklets. I probably threw out at least a thousand instruction booklets. The problem with that is that's only $10. It's really not much money at all. So uh, we have since changed our thought process on selling instructions. We will sell instructions but we're only going to sell them at, at the normal average six month sales at value average. I don't know what I said there. We're going to sell them at the last six month sales average price just because it's not worth selling them for one cent. If someone wants to come and get them for a cent, we still charge a $2 fee on top of that because 
It's the only item they want. It doesn't subtotal anything. If they add it to their order, it only makes shipping more expensive because instructions weigh so much. So it just really didn't make any sense. So what we did is we uh, we started listing them at the six month sales average uh, price, and we only save like two, maybe three of each type of instruction now. It makes storage much better. No longer sells it for a cent. Um, and we do increase. It does increase the lot count and stuff. Um, but also now that it only takes up six drawers over there, which is not a ton of room. We couldn't put much more there anyway. Um, it's not a big problem, and we do occasionally sell instructions, but no longer for one cent. Lots of bricks asks a good question. What percentage of customers chooses the eco-friendly package option? I'm thinking about adding that to my store. Thanks. I would say 90 to 95 percent of customers choose eco-friendly. Um, we probably only ship out maybe five to ten orders a month. Maybe not even that much. Yeah, probably. Five to 10 orders a month that are standard shipping. And for those of you who don't know, we have two shipping methods, standard and eco-friendly. All this means is for eco-friendly, you have five lots. They might all get put in the same bag and shipped to you. If you do standard shipping, they're all going to be put in their own individual bag and then shipped to you. Um, so eco-friendly obviously uses less bags. We also charge a little bit more for standard shipping. Occasionally people want it for really big orders where it's like 300 lots people, you know, that from our experience, that's when people usually want it. Um, but we offer it, though we're debating about switching only to eco-friendly so we're not having to ever, you know, accidentally realize if it's supposed to be standard or eco-friendly. The other day Kyle was packing an order, unfortunately, and he had started to put it in a bag. Then he scrolled up to the top and realized it was standard shipping. He had to pour it out and then sort all the pieces and put them in the bag. At that point, it was not worth the extra dollar or whatever for the standard shipping. Had he done that initially, it might have been worth the dollar because we're making money now um, to also offset the cost of the bags um, and things like that, the extra little bit of time it takes to put them in multiple bags. But uh, we probably are going to switch over to eco-friendly only, um, where we put multiple lots in the same bag. But about 90 to 95% choose eco-friendly. It is also the default option. So you actually have to click standard. It is automatically selected as eco-friendly by default though, and that probably helps too. It's also cheaper, so, you know. All right, final question of the week is from Blueprint B Bricks, who says, what would you say the store's USP is, or unique selling proposition, and why do you think people place an order with you guys? I think there's a few different reasons for this. First of all, I think a lot of it's from the YouTube channel. A lot of it, people, I think, enjoy seeing who's packing their order. You know, we get a lot of people who want their order packed on camera, but we have a lot of orders who are from people on the YouTube channel who don't mention anything or just say thanks for the channel, love the content, and they just buy some pieces. Um, so I think that is the biggest one. Um, we have the, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, you know, you can see who's doing the process of whatever you're, you're watching or whatever you're, you see where your stuff is coming from, I guess, if that kind of makes sense. Um, so I would say that's a big one. In addition to that, I would say, uh, the speed in which we ship out. We try to ship same day on any order that's placed before 1 p.m. Um, and if your order's placed at 2 p.m., it might still ship same day, even 3 p.m., depending who's in the store, what time we have to ship that day, all that kind of stuff. So I would say um, one of them is our speed of shipping. Not necessarily the shipping speed once it's to the post office, but us, you know, there's people who place an order and within 10 minutes it is at the post office. Um, not that we are doing that intentionally, but it just happens to line up with our schedule. And then in addition to that, I would say we try to have high quality pieces, first of all, and then packaging as well. Um, you know, if it comes in a box, our box is going to have a logo on it. We have a little card that goes in your box, has our logo, has the order number, says who packed it, makes it very personable um, and fun like that. So I think that's why people come to our store. Um, they realize it's high quality, fast shipping, um, and, you know, decently packaged pieces. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, as always, put them in the comments section below for next Brickside Chat. Uh, hopefully you found this interesting. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. Welcome to the channel, by the way. And if you're interested in joining our Discord or Patreon, all the links for that are in the description below as well. Thank you guys. We'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.